it's like to be one of the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. For sure, the opportunity. So, how many of you have seen the Tiger in front of City Hall? Yeah. I'm here tonight to tell you how we got there and to tell you about the man, the renowned artist who created my pops, George Carey. Frederick Douglass School was the school for black kids in Key West from 1871 to 1965. It was the home of the Tigers. When the school closed to desegregation, the students and the mascot were assigned to Memorial School. That school would be renamed Glen Archer the following year. George Lewis Carey was born in 1941, a fourth generation comp. He was a typical Key West boy, rather be on the water than in school. When he was in school, he filled his notebooks with drawings of books, I'm sorry, of books, and cartoons of friends. This is, uh, he was 11 years old in this picture, and this was actually his first commission piece. So he was off to a good start from an early age. So his mom recognized his interest in art and trying to keep him out of trouble. She enrolled him in art classes with the well-known artist Gerald Leeds. The classes were held on the grounds of the Hemingway home. George told stories of Hemingway's wife serving the students Kool-Aid and cookies. This is one of George's paintings of the Hemingway house. Now George went to high school at Memorial. He was also kicked out of Memorial for drag racing down Truman Avenue. Him and a handful of his friends. His mother pleaded with the powers that be of Mary Mackey and the Catholic Church to admit George and the other boys to the all-girls school. <laughs> Somehow she convinced them. They admitted him, and George graduated from Mary Mackey. Here he is with a painting he did of the convent for a fundraiser in 2007. Yeah, that's his painting, that's not a picture. So when George got out of school, he decided he better join the service, and he joined the Air Force, where he learned to fight fires and karate. <laughs> he became a father to two boys. George served four years in the Air Force before he re returned home to join NAS Key West Fire Department. Always looking for a chance to fabricate or paint, he built a board map of Boca Chica, which is still in use today. This past year, the board was refurbished by the Bravo Boys, whose father and grandfather was George's good friend and fellow fireman. This is also where he met my mama and suddenly became a dad to four more kids. Three girls and three boys. We were like the Brady Bunch, I guess. They call that a blended family now. I don't know, but it worked for me. George and I hit it off great. Did I mention my pops knew karate? <laughs> I mean, every kid wants to say that, right? Um, and he was a third degree black belt. And he raised boats, fiberglass outboard boats that he designed and built himself. Here we are in the pits. I was his crew chief, the best in the league, he'd tell you that. And he was the best. His boats were faster and better looking than the competition. Even they tell you that. George left the firehouse and opened a body shop where he painted cars and restored classics to their glory. Maybe the best work to come out of the garage was this Christmas gift. Yep, that was a Carrie Custom Chopper. <laughs> and yes, that is a steering wheel. 
What you can see is the gold metallic paint with red flake and pinstripes. <laughs> that was the best Christmas ever. <laughs> That'd be joyful. <laughs> George was a good dad. He supported our interest. For example, here is George III playing football in City League over there in Wickers Field. George spray painted every helmet on the team. There were no vinyl decals when your dad was George Kennedy. That was a good hit too. <laughs> After a few years in Texas, we returned to Key West and George became the welding teacher of Key West High. This was my senior year. He and his students built the conch shell for Key West High, the home of the conchs. The conch shell was the first of a series of sculpture George and his students would build. Here he is welding the buccaneer for Horse O'Brien. <laughs> and even with that 80s hairdo and him and his trucker hat, we were no match for the eight foot buccaneer. <laughs> the sugarloaf shark is sometimes forgotten, but pound for pound, is equally impressive. The record at FKCC is another massive piece. George told me once he was disappointed with the outcome because he couldn't get the torso just right. Of course, there's also the manatee that sits in front of First Aid Bank. I don't know how they talked him into doing that one. <laughs> it's a GQ right there. Uh, anyway, and because, and of course, our beloved Tiger for Glen Archer School. Mr. Glenwood Lopez, my dad's friend and co-worker at Key West High, suggested George do a Tiger. Mr. Lopez was a graduate of Frederick Douglass School. Remember, the original home of the Tigers. The Tiger stood on the corner of White and United for nearly three decades for nearly three decades, for locals and tourists to enjoy. During this time, George also began to paint professionally. He lived in a small, we lived in a small conch house on United Street. The dining room became his studio, and walking around the house was not an option because the floors would shake. <laughs> Former Mayor Richard Hyman, the owner of Gingerbread Square Gallery, signed George on early. He hosted George's first big show. After the show, he teased George that he wouldn't be able to have any more shows there. But so many conks showed up, there wasn't room. And they ate too much. <laughs> he didn't mind that it was a sold out show though. And that was the first of many. You may recognize uh, some of these pieces. In fact, the Armory on White was the former home of the studios of Key West. Here's one of my favorite. It's White, Whitehead Street in the 50s. You might notice the sailor below the lighthouse. George painted what he called photorealism, acrylic on canvas. He painted the Key West he remembered and loved, the homes and landscape. Over the years, George's work became sought after. He was recognized with awards. He was a five-time finalist in the prestigious Art for Parks competition and three times recognized by the Mystic Maritime Invitational in Mystic, Connecticut. It's one of my favorites. He did a series on the Western Union that's right out there in the harbor. This is Sails Down. He also did Sails Up. Maybe because of a great story. Here he is with the longtime captain of the Western Union, Dick Stedman. Stedman had been ill for many months, but enjoyed spending the day with George signing prints of the peace. Captain Stedman died the next day. Over the years, my mom and George split. 
he remarried and moved to Ohio and later West Virginia. There he was inspired to paint a series of Native Americans and frontiersmen. This will be his last work. George died after a short battle with cancer in August of 2010. In 2013, the school district gave the property of Glen Archer School, including the Tiger, to the city of Key West. HOB will become a K-8 school, and all the students will become Buccaneers. There was no longer a Tiger. During the restoration of the building, Cam and Smith Martin volunteered to restore the Tiger. And Mayor Kate said the tiger will return to the property on the corner of White and Night. In October 2016, Mayor Cates brought a resolution to the commission to return the tiger to White and United. The resolution was tabled because a controversy was brewing. Some commissioners and the Arts and Public Places advisory didn't think the tiger belonged there anymore. They said it would stand up. City Hall didn't need a mascot. The resolution would go to vote again in November. I attended the meeting and spoke out. I reminded the commission that Tiger was more than a mascot. It was a landmark. It was an attraction. It was part of the island folklore. Students, teachers, and local artists had created and maintained the tiger for close to three decades. The tiger, like the city, was strong and resilient. And the tiger, like the locals, was bold and beautiful. In a narrow 4-3 vote, the resolution was passed. The tiger returned. United on January 3rd, 2017, allowing the legacy of the Tiger and my dad, George Carey, to live on for generations to come. <laughs>